Hi and welcome to this YouTube video. In this video, I will teach you how to deploy a Django project to an AWS EC2 instance. So the first step that uh, we need to take is make sure that our project or your project is already uh, on a GitHub repository. Now, the reason why we need to do this is because it's going to make our life easier when we want to deploy this project to the instance. So make sure that you just deploy um, your project to uh, GitHub so we may proceed. So the next step you need to take is log into your uh, Amazon dashboard. And you, you need to search for EC2 uh, right here, search bar. So just click it. And when you click it, you'll be brought to um, this page. So just uh, click instances. So this is just going to take you to where you are going to see all your instances. So right now I have uh, just one running. So I would like to launch a new instance because we want to host this uh, website, this Django project on a new instance. So click launch instances. So the first uh, thing that we need to specify on this page is the name of this server. Now you can decide to name uh, this server anything you want. I'm just going to call it um, tutorial. Now, after specifying the name of this tutorial, we need to select uh, an operating system that we want to deploy these projects to. And it's the operating system that will run on this server. So we're just going to go with uh, Ubuntu. Now, the next uh, step that we need to take is that we need to make sure that uh, we are seeing a type of T2 micro under the uh, instance type. So just make sure that uh, you have T2 micro because it's the free tier. So we can uh, have an instance for free running on AW. So after doing that, we need to scroll down to network settings. And you need to make sure that create security group is clicked and allow SSH traffic from ticked. So you need to make sure that these two things are ticked. Now, the next uh, step that we need to take is, yeah, I think that is pretty much it. So let's click launch instance now it's going to ask us to create uh, a key pair but let's just click create without key pair because we uh, we won't ssh into the server as we will be working directly on the cloud and i will show you how we're going to do this so just click proceed without key pair and take it here so after doing that just click launch instance so when you click that it's going to um launch the instance for okay so let's now go to instances so when we come back to instances you'll see that uh the instance state is pending and then the status check is still being it has not been verified so what we need to do right now is wait for the instance state to say running and we need to uh, wait for the status check to say two over two passed so you can do that by constantly refreshing I'm just going to pause here and wait for the uh, instance to finish uh, setting up. Okay, so right now um, we can see that the instance state says running and the status check says two over two checks passed. So right now our, our instance has been successfully created for us. What we need to do right now is we need to connect to this instance. So click the instance that uh, you have created, which is tutorial that I created. And once you click it, I head over to the top here and click connect. So once you click connect, just scroll down a bit. And then when you see connect, just click that button. So it's going to open um, this web terminal for us that we can use to interact with our server, which, which we just created. So let's just clear out uh, the screen and do that by typing C-L-E-A-R, which is clear. Now, uh, what we need to do first is that we need to update this server. Uh, so what uh, the command that we're going to run is sudo apt uh, dash get space update. So once you uh, run that command, it's just going to uh, update this server for you. Now, I had already gone ahead and done some testing. So that's why the prompts being printed are very short. But for you, it's probably going to take a while for 
server to update now that's why it took a very short while for mine to update. now the next step that we need to get yeah that we need to take is that we need to clone this github repository which we had created here into this ec2 instance so i want you to head over to your repository click this drop down right here and copy the link so after copying it, head back to your EC2 instance. Let's clear the screen and run uh, the command git clone and then paste that link. So once you do that, it's just going to clone um, the repository into this EC2 instance for us. And if I type ls, which is to see the contents right now, we can see that a new folder has been created called Django Channels Chat App, which is the exact same name of my repository so right now i have successfully cloned the repository into server so let's cd into this uh folder and when i say ls to see the content you can see that it's the exact same content as the one on repository so we have the requirements templates and all that and it's the exact same thing getting displayed right so let me clear out the screen the next step that we need to take is we need to install the dependencies that our projects need. Dependencies like obviously Django and other um, libraries that we probably used. That is why I have a requirements file in my repository that I can install from. Now we know that in order to install repos um, we know that to install packages, we need to use pip, which is the uh, package install manager for Python. Now in order to um, do this we first need to install pip so uh we need to run a command right now to install pip to run the command sudo base apt base install uh install space python 3 dash pip uh, space dash y so once you run this command it's going to just install pip for you now the reason why again uh the reason why uh the prompts are short is because I already have pip installed as I went ahead and um, did some testing. If uh, while you were installing, you saw uh, a strange prompt just show up on the screen, you can just click exist and that will get rid of it. So let's clear out the screen right now. So right now we have um, pip installed. The next step that we need to take is we need to install all the requirements for our project dependencies. So I am going to run the command pip install or let's write pip3 install uh, dash r requirement dot txt. Now once you run that command, it's going to install the requirements for you. But you can see I had already installed this requirement earlier. So just sit back and um, wait for pip to install all the requirements. That so after doing that let's just clear out the screen now if if you haven't made migrations earlier that is if i go to my repository right now you can see i have uh, a database here now that comes from a project that i worked on earlier it's a channels uh, chat app that i worked on so these are just the basic modules and i had already made the migrations and migrated the changes to the database but if you haven't done that just make sure you run uh, make migrations and my and if you also don't have a super user make sure you create a super user i am going to assume you know how to do those things so right now what we now need to do next is run our server so run python manage.py run server it's giving us an error let's do python 3 manage.py run server so once you run that command, it's going to run our server for you. But I want you to take note of something. You'll notice that right here, we have the local development server, which is a local host being returned back to us. Now that doesn't make sense because we want to host our website in such a way that anybody with the link in, in any part of the world can access this website. But we are being given local host, which is a local development server. So basically nobody can access it except us on our local machine so what we need to do right now is we need to uh, make some changes so let's first break out of terminal using ctrl c 
and then let's uh run the following command python i would like to clear my terminal first let's run python 3 manage.py run server and then once type 0 0.0.0, .0, .0, .0 will run 8000 So why we are doing this is because we will need to set um in order for in order for us to have this uh Django project or Django app globally available to anybody, we're going to need to go to the security groups and set an inbound rule. And then we will need to point to port 8000 so that we will be able to connect to um our Django project or our, our Django app on port 8000 from um the server. So you are going to see how uh, we are going to do this. So what we need to do right now is head back to the EC2 instance. And then, uh, so I'm just going to head back to the instance. And then I want you to click that instance. And if you scroll down a bit, you'll notice that we have this public IPv4 address. If we open that link in a new tab, now, when you open this link, I want you to replace the HTTPS with HTTP and then visit it on port 8000. So it's going to be colon 8000. Now, once we try uh, visiting this link, you are going to notice that nothing is going to happen. Now, nothing is going to happen because we need to set up uh, the inbound rule, which is going to point to our app. Uh, which is going to point this IPv4 uh, address to our app and to our Django application on port 8000. So we need to head back to the instance. Now this is just going to load and eventually it's going to stop loading and display an error in the browser. So we need to head back to um, the browser and then we need to click this uh, ID, instance ID of our EC2. So once we do that, I want you to scroll down a bit and then under the security tab, you'll notice that we have inbound rules and outbound rules. So what we need to do here is that we need to create a new uh, inbound rule. So you see this URL here for security groups. Click this URL and you will be brought to this page right here. So what we need to do is say edit inbound rules. Once you click that, just click add rule. So we need to add a new uh, inbound rule. So under here for, for the port range, for the port range, since we would like to connect to port 8000, we're just going to type in 8000 here. And then for the uh, source info, we're going to select 0. K. If I zoom in here, I'm zoom out, I mean, we need to select 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. Because uh, you know uh, we had run the server earlier on that particular URL, which is here. So we need to select that. So basically, it means that uh, we can connect to our Django app from anywhere or, or from anywhere on port 8000. That is why we need to do. That. That's why it's saying anywhere. Since we can connect to our Django app on point 8000 from. So once you've done that, just click Save Rules. Now, uh, once that has saved, we can head back to the URL and reload. Now, you will notice that uh, we are getting an error saying invalid HTTP, blah, blah, blah. So this is purely coming from Django. Now, uh, the reason why we are getting this error is because um, in the installed apps in our Django projects, if I go to my settings right now, let me just go to my settings on the repository. If I go to my settings, I hadn't specified um, allowed host right here. So it's giving us an error. So now we can solve this simply. If we head back to the um, terminal right here, let's break out of the server. Now once we break out of the server, we need to edit our settings.py file in our project folder. Now, if we edit it on our project, on github we'll have to reclone the uh, repository and uh, that's just a longer process so we can do this in a shorter way if i say uh, let me just clear my screen first if i say ls here you can see that we have uh, the charts project and inside the charts project we have our uh, the settings.py file i'm going to say nano 
space chat project forward slash settings dot pi. So I would like to edit this uh, file. This is my settings dot pi file right here. So if I scroll down a bit, I would see allowed host. Now what uh, Nano allows us to do is basically to just edit uh, our code inside the terminal. So in here, I'm just going to type in star, which means any URL or any, yeah, any URL or any domain can host our website. So in order to save these changes and exit this, all we need to type first is control O, press enter, and then control X. So once we've uh, done that, all we simply need to do is run the server again. So I am going to run the server on this URL earlier that we had done. So once that is running, let's head back to URL and refresh. Now, what do you know? The project is uh, showing and everything is working perfectly well right now. So we've been able to host our Django project on an Amazon EC2 instance. That is all for today, guys. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.